For years, Netflix has had a bad reputation for forcing inclusion into everything it touches, making changes that for 90% of people do not make sense, but for them it does. Avatar obviously was not left out of this, and today we will analyze 7 changes that we know the live-action adaptation of Avatar, The Last Airbender will have, and that put the success of this series at risk. Stay until the end to find out what the change will be, riskiest action that Netflix took, and what its consequences could be. The look at Sozin and the Fire Nation's attack on the Air Temples will be an interesting change, considering the creators were involved in this first episode. Without a doubt, what we see will be something canon that they could not show in the animated series due to censorship. I think this will be something epic, but dangerous. Epic because we will have one more piece of lore to add. We will meet new airbenders, and with 90% security, we will be able to see the last moments of Monk Yatso dangerous because it is an extra scene, and we will see a war between hundreds of benders, which can be dangerous in terms of CGI and choreography in the fights of the extras. Let's keep in mind that this will be the first look we will take at the series, which could turn out very well or very badly. For the moment we are going to leave it at a moderate risk. We continue with a very simple change, the length of the chapters. In the first season of the animated series, we had 2023-minute episodes, a total of 460 minutes, compared to 8 episodes of about 1 hour, giving us 480 minutes, so we have an extra 20 minutes in the live action. We also know the names of these episodes, which would rule out filler moments, such as predictions, death cannon, or prisoners, but I believe that these smaller stories will be included within the same main adventures. We could, for example, meet a imprisoned Haru in the Kyoshi Warriors episode, or a Jet and the Freedom Fighters in the Blue Spirit story. Anyway, I think it will compensate, so I don't see much risk here. The appearance of Ozai, Azula, and Mai wasn't something we saw until the second book. The mystery of knowing the face of the Fire Lord was something that intrigued us until the third season, but in this case we can see it from the first book. I think this is going to be favorable for Ozai, because by having a little more participation, perhaps we will be able to see some development in the character, taking him away from being a very square and cliché villain. Of course, this is assuming that his faces aren't just a cameo at the end of the season like Azula was. At least with Ozai, we know that he will appear in several scenes such as the Storm episode, which I reiterate, does not seem like a bad plan to me and I hope they make this villain someone more visible during the series. Here we do have a little more risk since if they seek to give Ozai more prominence, they can raise this character or destroy him. A small change that we will experience will, of course, be the music, which fortunately will be almost identical, but this time, re-recorded with real instruments. Yes, the first time, not everything was recorded with real instruments, it was mostly synthetic. Fortunately, the same composer from the original series was in charge of this, and we already know how good the soundtrack is. It sounds great! This does not assume any risk for my taste but I mention it because it is a difference with respect to the animation that we know about. Exploring new avatars is something that fascinates us all. During The Legend of Korra we were able to meet one, during the comics and novels, Yangchen, Kurok, and Kyoshi. But during The Legend of Aang we only superficially met Roku, and much more superficially the others. In this adaptation it is planned to expand more on Kyoshi and Kurok, which in my opinion will be positive. As I mentioned many times, the series was made in collaboration with Avatar Studios so some things we see may be part of the canon of this world. I think that this, in a measured way, will not carry much risk of ruining the story since they will be able to show us things about Kyoshi, for example, that we met in his novels and were not delved into in depth in the series. The Avatar Kurok was undoubtedly completely forgotten, with a few seconds of appearance in both Aang and Korra. However, according to leaks in this adaptation he will have a much larger role, his dagger being the only way to destroy the spirits of the moon and the ocean. 
This new discovery made by Zhao and the Washer Tong Library will tell us a little more about the history of the Avatar of the Water Tribe, and perhaps give a good opportunity to this rather forgettable antagonist in Book 1 to have more prominence and development. Like the previous event, the risk of this is moderate, but there is something that is clearly very dangerous and could deprive us of a second season. Roku was Avatar Aang's guide and mentor, being someone quite temperate and advising our little nomad during his journey. But what if those tips were, freeze your opponent's hearts with waterbending, beat up everything that moves and fall in love with a firebender? Well, this is perhaps what having Kyoshi as a mentor entails. According to an interview a few months ago with Yvonne Chapman, who will play the Avatar of the Earth Kingdom, she hinted that her role in this first season would go much further than a simple appearance in a filler episode, and that she would fulfill the role of mentor to the protagonist. Of course this is not 100% confirmed since many times we saw how actors and actresses mention things to increase the hype or controversy of the public, Marvel being number one in this task, but, and if it is true? If this happens like this, it could be the most risky of all since it would be a big change for the bald man's way of thinking, not to mention that being a pacifist he would find more conflicts than solutions by talking to his past life. It would be something too abrupt, for example, to change the end of the series, with Aang eliminating the Fire Lord, without mentioning that it would also be, in my opinion, a huge mistake. Avatar's script is not perfect but it is a 9.8 out of 10 with very small gaps or things that could be changed for the better. I think developing Kyoshi's life more, knowing about his past as we already saw in the novels, even seeing Rengi, Yoon, or Kelsang there, would be great. The challenge is, respect the original story as much as possible, having a change as big as this. What do you think? Leave it to me in the comments. I hope you liked this video and we'll see you next week with more. Goodbye.